Let's bring in General Mark Hurtling, a CNN military analyst and the former commanding general of Europe and the 7th Army and counterterrorism expert and senior fellow at the Foundation of Defense of Democracies, David Gartenstein Ross. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being on New Day. Let's talk about these numbers that Congress will see because they are um, somewhat outrageous. Uh, here are the numbers. We'll put them up on the screen for our viewers. Um, the head of the counterterrorism center believes that there are 20,000 total foreign fighters from 90 different countries who have gone to Iraq and Syria to join ISIS. 3,400 of those are Westerners. Uh, approximately 150 of them are Americans. David, I know you take issue with some of these numbers. What's the problem, do you think? No, I, I don't really take issue with the numbers, actually. I was uh, talking um, prior to the segment with a producer about um, certain jumps in numbers. And the point I made simply was that if the numbers increase by 1,000 over the course of a month, it isn't necessarily because uh, you have 1,000 foreign fighters going that month. But rather, uh, it can be because a new national estimate, for example, came out <clears throat> from one of the relevant countries. But I think that uh, the numbers are about as accurate as, as you'll get. Um, there are some gaps in the information because these guys are covert, but they're good numbers. Okay, that's good to know because, General, it seems as though the numbers are a bit all over the map. For instance, the CIA, just at the end of 2014, said that they believed that ISIS was only 20,000 to 30,000 strong. So the, the fact that they would have that many foreign fighters does seem possibly inflated. Where are you on the numbers, General? I, I don't really care about the numbers, Allison, truthfully. I, I just think it's concerning that they seem to be increasing. And I think it's a direct reflection of the recruiting effort of jihadists. And uh, it, it's a very different approach that ISIS has taken than what we've seen from al-Qaeda in the past. When I was in fighting in northern Iraq, the, the call to jihad was, come fight the occupiers, come fight the Americans. Now there's a change in tone in the recruiting efforts, which is, come join our state. It's a bucolic scene. Things are wonderful here. You, you have good pay. Uh, sex is plentiful. We're fighting for a cause. It, it seems to appeal to the millennial generation of Arabs who want to be part of something bigger than themselves. And that's what's troubling to me. And you make a great point, General, but I just want to stick with you for one second, because don't we need to know an exact number of fighters for the coalition to effectively fight them? Well, again, this, this gets back to the body count uh, discussion we had uh, last week, Allison, about, you know, how many are there? How many have we killed? It doesn't really matter if these are disorganized people, if they are coming to jihad for the first time. What's not considered in those numbers of 20,000 now being there, coming from different places, is how many have been uh, defeated or killed within the last week at the same time. So there may be more coming in, but they've also gone into a cauldron of, of very intense combat. So y yes, it's concerning. The numbers are important to get a feel for your uh, the analysis of your enemy, but there's more important things than just a straight up numbers. And we can talk about that all day long. And let's do that. In fact, let's talk about the ideology. David, I want to ask you, since that video was put out by ISIS, that hideous video of the Jordanian pilot being burned to death in a cage, has recruitment dropped off? It's, it's impossible to say because, um, you know, as I was talking about with the numbers before, uh, these are people who are trying to disguise their travel route in. And uh, usually the trends in numbers are only evident over time. Uh, I don't see evidence that it's dropped off. But, you know, at, at some point, uh, I do believe that the numbers will drop off. I think that the atrocities being, conflict, uh, being inflicted by ISIS are not quite as relevant uh, as how ISIS is doing on the battlefield. I, I do think the atrocities are relevant. And if you look at ISIS, ISIS's predecessor, al-Qaeda in Iraq, it ended up getting actually completely upended in part by the atrocities it was committing. But that was because uh, it experienced battlefield losses based upon those atrocities in the form of uprisings against them, the Sahwa or Awakening movement and the like, uh, which ended up really destroying that organization in the 2007 to 08 period. And likewise, when ISIS starts to experience losses on the ground on the basis of the atrocities it's carrying out, I think that will be very weakening to that organization. General, which one do you think is more important, their PR image or what happens on the battlefield? A little bit of both. Uh, and, and I think certainly when you talk about a campaign, Allison, you're talking about information operations. 
they had ISIS had the upper hand early on because they were successful in recruiting. Now that's starting to turn on them. And there are there are counter information operations campaign that shows, as I mentioned earlier, it's not such a bucolic scene. It is horrible fighting. There are horrible deeds being committed. They are there are dastardly acts. The sex is sometimes forced. So all those things that help recruit them are now being countered. At the same time, they are suffering tremendously in terms of uh, uh, just actions on the battlefield, strategically, operationally, and tactically. So I think David is exactly right. They are going to implode a little bit, just like Al-Qaeda did, but at the same time, there is going to be a requirement to continue to push that implosion with combat operations. Okay, General Mark Hurtling, David Gartenstein-Ross, thanks so much for all the information. Nice to see you, gentlemen. Let's go over to Chris.